Oh, we're live. Yes. Hey, it's Chris Homestead and Hardway. And we had a couple people ask about uh, making hog feet. And it's probably an area that needs addressing, so we're going to do a quick video on it. This is half rye and half whole corn. First thing we got to do is turn this into something you make feed out of because they can't eat it like it is now. And I skip because it's so loud. All right, come here. Okay. That's what it looks like one time through the grinding. The rye has to be mixed with the corn or it won't grind it up. So you'll see a lot, of the, a lot of the rye is not ground up there. So what we're doing for this is running it back through the grinder a second time. this video is going to come together but that's 20 pounds of ground corn which is about half as fine as crack corn like you give chicken there's 20 pounds of rye and corn that's pretty much ground in the meat so there's fine. ground pretty fine and this it's about normal hog feed. That's about where you grind it. And here's the important part. This is vitamin and protein supplement. Mineral, vitamin and protein supplement. And this is why I see a lot of people make their mistake making feed. Now we feed our hogs peanuts. We feed them pumpkins. We feed them sweet potatoes. And that's fine. That's perfectly fine. As long as you feed it on top of a good pig ration. Now this one is going to be 25% rye one bucket make sure I tell you this right one bucket should have been 10 pounds of rye and 10 pounds of corn this bucket was 20 pounds of corn so there's 40 pounds of grain to 10 pounds of supplement how good you can see this we're going to try it we've actually done another video we tried to do this but that'll come in but this is important now you can make up the protein in several different ways but the trick is making up the vitamins and minerals and even with it is Broad of a uh, ration as we give these pigs, 
you can tell the difference whether or not they get this picks up. I've got a good friend of mine down the road around the corner that uh, was feeding his pigs corn, pumpkin, soybeans, uh, which we find you're not supposed to feed them soybeans, but not without them being heat treated. But he was feeding anything he'd come up with, especially trying to be organic. Pigs won't grow, they just were not growing. And a good example, I don't know if you've seen or not, but that little bobtailed red gill I got there with my pigs. She come over here and hit a growth spurt, and it's night and day different. And he asked me, he said, what's the difference? I said, the only difference is I'm making actual hog food, and I'm feeding. But this is our recipe. This is going to be a little quick video. And that's enough for me to feed one day. And this will work. I'm feeding a five gallon bucket in the morning and a five gallon bucket in the evening. And this is also the same feed we feed the birds. But it should be, if what I researched on the rise, right, and without doing a protein test on the corn, just going by what corn is supposed to be, this should be about a 12% topping fee. Now, if we'd have used straight corn and no rye, it'd have been 15%. But there's a little bit of debate on how high the protein needs to be. Our local feed mills, topping feed is 10% protein, and their pig and sow is 12%. I think that's right. So, if you go by that, then for your little pigs and your bred sows, 12% should be good, but normally we feed a 14%. The only difference for the little, little pigs is that we grind it a little bit more, that's one more right. time. That's right. They get the same percent of protein. It's just ground a little bit finer. But I may be a little higher on the protein. You may not have to make it as high as I make. But the truth is, one reason I do it is that a bag of supplement will make five bags of hog food. So 50 pounds of supplement will make 250 pounds of feed. If you do it the other way, you end up making like five and a half bags, something odd. A little high won't hurt them. A whole lot high might will. A whole lot high might cause some scars. A little high, especially with anything else to feed them, is not going to hurt them. But one rule of thumb I've always used is they get their daily ration. Ah. Uh, like old bread sow, get a, this scoop holds five pounds. She'll get this scoop, scoop and a half a day. So you give her three quarters of a scoop in the morning, three quarters of a scoop in the evening, not feed them twice a day. The old big boar, we're trying to keep him on a diet. Pigs never quit growing and never quit getting bigger. He gets about a half a scoop a day. If his condition starts getting a little bit less than I want it to be, I'll bump him up some. But... When we can get them, when they're available, we feed pumpkins. When I can get them and they're available, I feed peanuts. When they're sweet potatoes, everybody's digging sweet potatoes, I feed some scrap sweet potatoes. I feed scrap watermelons. I feed everything that's left over at the garden. But I feed it on top of this pig ration. So they get their feed every day because they need the supplement. They need the vitamins and minerals and everything that's in that supplement. They won't get it from straight grain, and they will not get it from anything else you can come up with to feed them. Yes, protein, uh, peanuts full of protein. Yes, pumpkins are full of some other stuff, but they won't get everything they need out of just produce or out of just grain. They've got to have something. A wild hog would be eating 
worms and bugs and anything he could catch, that there would be a little more variety there is how they get away. The corn grinder, I'm sure they're available different places. We got lucky and found out the friend of mine had And we don't have a very elaborate operation. You saw me mixing it in the wheelbarrow with a shovel. But I can get out here with that little grinder and make enough feed one day a week to feed all week. No problem. With the amount of hogs we have now, it's not really that big of a deal. The, uh, and we do have a big mixer grinder that's awfully aggravating to use, and I don't actually own a tractor this time big enough to pull it, so I have to borrow a tractor. And then you don't have anywhere to put the feed after you make it. We don't have a shelter to park the thing under, so this really works good for me. And we use it to make some cow feed too. The dirty corn, Sometimes we'll get some corn to fill the stalks and stuff. We grind it up. Makes good cow feed. And uh, you can use wheat the same way we used the rye. And I think that's about all I can tell you tonight. This is just a little quick introduction. But if you have any questions, or if you have any questions about the supplement, because you can buy pellet supplement and just put it out there in a feeder available for them, and they'll eat a little bit along what they want. But uh, if you have any questions, if you leave me in the comments, I'll be glad to answer them for you. Just remember, you're never a pie field, but turn it over in your mind, and hope y'all have a good evening.